Hello future engineers, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're still new to my channel and you like what I'm doing, please don't forget to share my videos to your friends and to your friends' friends. That's the only way you can keep me going, refreshed and inspired. Also, if you find my videos important and interesting to your studies, please don't forget to subscribe. By the portal method, determine approximately the axial force in member JK, the shear force in HG, the moment at A, and the moment at joint I. So here is the frame subjected to these lateral loads. Uh, areas are given, but because the method is portal by portal method, so these areas are not uh, used, but in cantilever method, we can use this. So let's denote the shear in exterior column as V2, interior columns 2 times V2. By principle, this is also 2 times V sub 2, then V sub 2. Also in this junction, we have at the center or midpoint of the member V1, 2 times V1, 2 times V1, and that's V1. So for the upper part, summation forces horizontal equals 0, so 60 equals 6V sub 2. So V sub 2 is equal to 10 kilonewtons. Then for the lower part, 60 plus 100 equals 6V sub 1. But before that, we can solve for the axial force in member JK, which is this. So imagine that this is isolated as free body diagram up to this portion. The vertical component of the of the forces at these midpoints, which are imagined hinges, internal hinges, are not important because our equation is just summation of forces horizontal. So from the figure 60 equals V sub 2 plus 2 V sub 2 plus FGK. So 60 equals V sub 2, 10 plus 2 V2, which is 2 times 10, and plus FGK. From there, we can solve FGK equals 30 kilonewtons, and it is compression. For the shear force in HG, so we throw free body diagram of this part and this part so that we can analyze. Likewise, 60 plus 100 equals so this is the FBD of the upper part. So 60 plus 100 equals 6 V sub 1. So that means V sub 1 is equal to 26.67 kilonewtons necessary for solving the shear in HG. So this is the FBD. So for this part here, if you do the free body diagram, so since V2 is 10, and that's 60, so that is 50. In this part, we apply action and reaction. Then we have here F1H, which is equal to this. Just not name it. Uh, 10 plus 100 is 110 minus 26.67, so that means this is 83.33. And this is the shear in HD that is required. So if we sum up moment about this point here called EH, then we can solve VHD. So considering this we the diagram, summation of moments about this point equals zero counterclockwise positive. So VHD times 3.75, where 3.75 is half of 7.5, plus 83.33 times 2.25 green colored markings or figures are distances. Then equals 10 times 2.5, 1.8 plus 2.25. Then plus 100 times 2.25. So those are the forces involved. These forces are not involved because we sum up moment about this point. 
So solving for VHD, it is equal to the shear in force in HD, 20.8 kilonewtons. Then, moment at A. So since V1 is solved, if we isolate this part, then V1 is rightward. So the moment at A is counterclockwise. And because this is the midpoint of AH, midpoint is half of 4.5. So moment at A is V1, which is 26.67 times 2.25. 2 and the sense is counterclockwise. So moment at A is equal to 60 kilonewton meter. While at I, so if we consider this part, moment at I is simply 10 times 1.8. As shown, it is also equal to this force times 3.75, but that's not necessary anymore. So MI equals 10 times 1.8. And it is equal to 18 kilonewton meter. So that's it for this problem. There's no need to put the sense because in this portion, the sense is counterclockwise counterclockwise. So if we consider this horizontal portion, moment at I would be clockwise. So that's why I do not put the sense anymore. That's the moment at joint I or the moment in member IH or the moment in member IJ.